joining us in the booth, working on the weekend like usual. Jack, so thank you so much for being a part of this. And Krager, this event always brings out those classic moments, including last year. If you missed it last year, you blew it. Let's catch you up to speed. I loved our call, Brando. Mark McMorris. Frontside 1440, an audible, saw the blitz, sees the open target going backside 16. Yes, he is. Oh, oh my oh. good word. Another gold medal. Wow. Well, I don't know about you guys, but just listening to that call again just gave me chills. Just fired up. Shivers. So, Jack. Excited to have you in the booth for this one. Best I hope life. that we make history like we did last year. Mark McMorris, so accomplished, trying to win another gold medal, a sixth career in slope style. Can he do it out here today? Well, that's one of the storylines. Let's take a look at some of the other storylines here on this men's snowboard Jeep slope style course. There's a great shot of this course. As you see, Mark trying to go for that six. And how about Rene Renacongas with that silver medal? Actually might have had it sewn up if not for that legendary run from your little brother on the final attempt. By far, by far the most excited individual on this Jeep Slope Style course last year. Let's see if he continues the enthusiasm. And we take a look at this start list. A lot of familiar names. Jack, anyone we should be keeping our eyes on out here today? Our top qualifier, Brock Crouch. I mean, all the way out of Southern California. This kid is just a ripper. Surfer, blonde hair, beautiful soul. So I can't <laughs> wait to see him take on this course. Well, here's a beautiful look at that Jeep Slope style course. And we'll get into the breakdown of what makes this course a little different than what we've seen from previous years. But kicking things off, 25-year-old Sven Torgren making his ninth X Games appearance. The Swede left foot forward is natural riding direction. These rails. They are not nice, they're rude, but Sven Thorgren is rude back. Backside 360, front one out. The way he pretzels that front side 180 out, Jack, that's a tough thing to do. Cap two, four-fifths commish, because it really fires up his friends. Here's the first of four jumps on the Jeep Slope Style course. Cap 12, front side 1080, double cork. Backside triple. Hi, how you doing? The speed. Last final hit, Sven. Double. First run, double back rodeo, and he gets it. Starting off the men's snowboard slope style final with a bang, boys. I had a hockey coach who always said on your first shift, you either hit somebody or you get hit. Sven Thorgren hit somebody with that run right out the gate. Starts out swinging, Craig. Four X Games medals in Sven's career, including a gold medal in slope style. Would love to get back on the podium. Now, gentlemen, I want to talk about something. The format of this event is so different from last year, and you know who it helps? You know who this will shine? Darcy Sharp. He has so many different rail tricks. He has so many different jump tricks, and it's overall impression, Brando. As you said, eight athletes, 35-minute jam session, ranking based on overall impression. You're not going to see a score after each run. You're going to see live rankings and a lot of moving and shaking throughout the day. You want to talk about moving and shaking, Jack? Those first two rails from Darcy. And that cab over two is actually psychotic because the takeoff is about six feet below that down bar. And make no mistake, that's what got Darcy Sharp into this final. What he's able to do on the rails really separates himself from this field. Cap 10 double, switch back 12, oh, backside he's got triple. Go. Oh, he gets it. Just pulls it around. A perfect run so far. Kind of lose a little speed at the end there on that last hit, but what a run up until that last feature. Darcy, Jack, and Craig, you guys have been spending a lot of time out on the course with those guys. How about that final kicker with that transition? How are the riders liking that? Because it is a departure from previous courses. It's different, it's awkward, it's tough to gain speed for it, but those who do will be rewarded greatly. Darcy Sharp got his rewards at the top with the rails and that switchback 12. Needs a little bit more speed for that one. A guy who can really utilize that last feature is Red Gerard. And we're looking at him right now. Reggie, Red Gerard. Starting off with a smooth start there, half cab on, nose press, pretzel out, 270 on, 270 out. Definitely one of the favorites here today.
front side 10, grabbing tail, letting go a little bit early. If you followed us in the women's slope style final earlier today, they were struggling with the speed a little bit. I think the men are going to be going a little bit faster just due to weight. Red Gerard, switchback triple. That's a pretty new one for him. It's cab double nine. Hi, how you Sending doing? Sending it. So now Reggie lands his first run. What are we going to see next? He's got to switch it up. Yeah, Maybe two or three more times. And that's the beauty of this format, is it really favors a rider like Red who can go completely so good. different every single attempt. Here's a good look at that switch backside triple. Takes off switch, lands switch, three off kilter dips, four full rotations around, and then he cuts out and hits that fin switch as well. He can do a back triple and a regular front nine, maybe in a second run. So here's Judd Hankis after finishing in seventh place in this slope style event last year, trying to potentially earn his first X Games medal. Opting for that blue rail, that is a massive gap to that square down bar. He makes it look easy and then sends front side 270 onto that third and final rail feature. Oh. Double 12, putting a little too much sauce on and over rotating. But with this new session, every hit counts. You don't want to just ride down the, the side here. So what do we got? All right, a nice smooth back three. Judd's got a sick backside 1080 on this thing. It's almost like a, oh, oh, he goes 12. A little preview of what's to come. See, that we talked about that shark fin earlier. That is really, really tough to do, to hold the speed and send it all the way down the landing. Judd, Red, we saw Mark in practice. Those guys are really utilizing that, and I think that'll set them apart from the rest of the field. We just locked into that rail right there. Here's where it went wrong, just getting off access a little bit. Didn't have the core strength to just slow it down at the end there. Closing in on the 30-minute mark here on the Jeep Slope Style course, Brock Crouch, our top-ranked qualifier, dare I say the best we've seen him ride in his young X Games career yesterday. Can he pick up where he left off? Well, front one, so switch 50, so cap three out. Cap to win, 270 out. Now, the gap how do you feel about the kit, Jack? I love it. I think he's rocking one of the most innovative kits yet. That pink onesie right there. Brock is one of the most positive kids I know. He was buried in an avalanche. I got to see him two weeks after. He's so positive about the experience. He's like, it was actually kind of peaceful. I broke my back, but that doesn't hurt. And already he's back, qualifying first. So good to have him back out here. Such a good person for the sport of snowboarding. Makes it look good. You see that front double nine at the end there? That just alludes to this format. You mentioned it earlier, Jack. Yeah, just because you fall, keep going. We saw Judd try that back 12 on that shark fin. Brock falls, he tries that front nine, he gets that. It's overall impression. You're judged on the entirety of your work in this time session. Very, very different from last year where it was just best run counts. Have a good run. You go a little bit to the side. So we move on to Mons Roislin, our bronze medalist from last year. And he's been riding this course so well all week, gentlemen. One thing of note in this final, gentlemen. Okay. Whoa. Cap 270, court 450. Or front 270, court 450 off, made famous by Marcus Cleveland. Really good at that trick. But the point I was trying to make, everybody in this final, left foot forward. Mons Roislin. Nice cap 10. Now, Craig, why is that? Everybody in this field is left foot forward. Uh, it's just a is just luck of chance. the draw. It's luck of the draw. We've got no lefties out here, essentially. Nobody is goofy here. Couple straight shooters. Mons. Back 10 off the bottom quarter. Stand up, Norway. Mons with two bronze medals in this discipline. You know, we talk so much about Mark, and he's our defending gold medalist, and certainly Brock Crouch being our top-ranked qualifier. Mons Roislin is sneaky, man, because he just always comes to play. And what an opening run for the Norwegian. What can you guys tell me about this next guy right here, oh. Rene Renacongas? Just pure joy. He's the Tasmanian devil of Craig, I, I have to ask you, though. Rene oh. Renacongas with this event, he's got four disciplines he's competing in in the next 29 hours. What's going through this kid's head right now? Uh, he's going to be really tired, but if anybody <laughs> has the energy for it, it's this young man right here. He is like the Energizer Bunny. He can ride this Jeep Slope Style course all day. Slope Style, 
big air tonight. Rail jam and knuckle hug tomorrow. Switch double backside rodeo, switch tail grab. The difficulty of that, you're not gonna see anybody else in the field put it down, but that back triple, unfortunately, unseats the fin. Yeah, I remember last year, Rene was sitting in first place all the way till the end of the contest. And he was just so excited to see everybody else land. He was the first person to congratulate every rider after they dropped after that on that last run. It was amazing. And he gave Mark McMorris, who actually took the gold medal spot from him, the biggest hug. He was probably the most stoked gentleman. Yeah. Even though he lost the number one spot. Completely genuine. And speaking of Mark McMorris, five gold medals in this event. He's got 17 overall. One more medal today, and he would tie Sean White's record for most winter discipline medals of all time. Now, Craig, is that on his mind? I think he's just uh, in flow state right now, that 50-50 back two. Big switch back two, comes off a little bit early on that long down bar. First jump for Sparky Mark McMorris. Front 10 double. Looking for something backside here. I'm thinking back triple. One, two. No, he's going backside 12, setting up for a cab takeoff, or sorry, switch backside. There's that switch backside oh! 16. So Mark so McMorris close. trying to take a shot downfield early. Fortunately, just getting a little front foot heavy and just couldn't hang on. Well, thank you, Jack Mitrani. We know you're the busiest man in Aspen. That's it? Hey, you're Craig and Mark's parents are here. Hey, there's Don McMorris. Don and Cindy. Don and Cindy McMorris making the trip down from Regina, Saskatchewan to watch the golden boy, Mark McMorris, going switchback, triple 16-20. But as you alluded to, Jack, just a little bit too much weight on the front foot. His legacy, Jake, kind of created our sport that we all love so much. And everyone that's know what should be really thankful for what he did. Being part of the Burton team, it's more like being part of a family. Jake means so much to me and still the day he died, he just lived and loved snowboarding so much. When I was 16 and got to ride for Burton, that was a dream come true. I could just tell we were gonna be really good friends right from the bat. Jake was completely devoted to community and family and friends. And it didn't matter who you were, he would listen to your story. And he was so respectful to everybody in all walks of life. He left a legacy that is pretty wide open for us to carry on, and it's in our hands now. If I could thank him and hug him again, I would just thank him for the life he gave me and the friendship we shared and until we meet again.
Howdy folks, Jack Mantrani here alongside 17-time X Games medalist Mark McMorris for a little chairlift conversation. Mark, how's it feel being back in Aspen? It's always a pleasure to be back in Aspen, Jack. I'm really glad to be here. Looking forward to a, a fun week. You're coming in this year with an opportunity to pass Sean White's record for most X Games medals. Is that extra pressure, motivation? What's going through your mind on that? I would say it's extra motivation. I'm trying not to put any more pressure on myself than I already do. Um, it's always a pressure-filled week regardless. Did you ever think back in the day as a kid that that would be a possibility? No, my, my goal as a kid was to maybe someday compete in the X Games or just to be a pro snowboarder on any sort of level. Right. I never realized the magnitude that it could get to. Well, hopefully it doesn't have to come down to, a, to last year when yeah. you're standing in the pressure cooker on your final run. It's fun for us, but I can't imagine what it's like for you. So hopefully it's an easy couple wins here and you're the most winningest snowboard male athlete here in X Games history after this weekend. Uh, sure ain't gonna be easy, but thanks, Jack. Yeah, Marky, good luck. I'm my best foot forward. Woo! Staring history in the face is Mark McMorris out here on the Jeep Slope Style course. We welcome you back to the Men's Snowboard Slope Style Final here at X Games Aspen. Runs number two, kicking off now with our current leader, Sven Thorgren. He came out the gate swinging Brando and was rewarded. Big front two, two out. I just love the audio. Snow, rails. Jeep slope style course. I mean, this is just where I want to be on a Saturday afternoon. Something about the Jeep slope style course, the picturesque skies of Aspen in your voice, Craig, just <laughs> makes it feel like it's the weekend and all is right in the world. No. How about Sven Thorgren, though? As you said, going coast to coast that entire first run, the first guy to drop in, and he's still leading. Good showing. Wow, cab double nine. Looks like he was trying to go pan on there. Uh, I think we kind of jinxed him a little bit on that first of the four jump line because he went down there. So obviously this run not as good as his first and the rest of the field will look to unseat him. Darcy Sharp sitting in fourth just outside of that podium position. It's certainly early. He does have a silver medal in this event, which he earned back in 2018. Completely different approach to this first set of rails. Wow. Cab one lip pretzel. I go switchboard, switchboard, 270 out. Darcy Sharp. To say he's good at this rail section would be an understatement. He is great. And then just professional rail slayer. Absolutely. Just a little bobble on that third and final rail though. Which kind of messed him up for this first jump. Second jump. Going backside five. Cab three. Switch backside nine on that shark fin feature. So Darcy Sharp, not exactly what he wanted. Obviously that bobble on the third rail feature played heavy into the jump section here. Oh, we wow. turn our attention to Red Gerard, 19 years old, out of Silverthorn, Colorado. His best finish coming last year here at X Games, where he came in fourth, still in search of that first X Games medal, but he's sitting in second. I don't think very many people have as many nicknames as Red Gerard. Red, yeah. Reggie, Rouge, Reginald. That switch back to was nice, though. Wow. 
So cab nine. Backside 12. He went switch back triple last time, goes switch back 12 so he can hit this other side. Show the judges, yeah, I got a front 10 on the other side too. Reggie Girard, that is going to put him in first place. It is, I'm sorry, it's got him. Why? Because he uses the entirety of this course. It wasn't as bold a claim as we originally thought as he <laughs> leapfrogged Sven to take over the top spot. Here's Judd Hankus. I'm literally hiding in my viewfinder. No one can see me if I hide in my viewfinder. So Judd, a little bit of an early exit on that first rail, second and third rail though. He's looking good. Front side 900. Now this new format lends itself to landing a couple of runs. Last year, you wouldn't see a 900 in a final of this magnitude. This year, you got to do more. You got to do more. And here's where Judd could really separate himself. Big back 10 on the shark feature. So Judd sitting in that eighth position with that, though. He's got to move up, Brando. So you take another look at Judd's run. I do want to remind you, if you didn't get a chance to see it earlier, Jamie Anderson on the women's side here in the Jeep slope style course, pushed ahead of Mark McMorris and Sean White for most snowboard slope style golds when she won her sixth earlier today. So much respect to the queen of slope style, Jamie Anderson. What a performance, so dominant. But here is Brock Crouch, our top ranked qualifier. He's sitting in sixth place. Brock going switch, backside 1080, landing a little backseat heavy, but hangs on to it. Cab 12, I love the way he dumps it over on that second dip. And backside 1440, Brock is on one. Frontside 900, so Brandon, just like the, woman, the women's final earlier today, there's a lot of struggles on that run one, but when it came to run two, everybody honed it in. They dialed it in, and uh, we've seen some very impressive runs thus far. Just like how he rode in qualifying. Backside triple, frontside 900. So a great run for Brock Crouch. We'll see where that puts him. Here's Mons Roisland sitting in that bronze medal spot right now as we're just under 20 minutes to ride with. Cab over two onto that rainbow rail. Ooh, good air awareness to save that 180 on 360 off. Cab 10, I'm looking something switch backside triple 16-ish. Holds it at switchback 12. Wants to put one down. Back 10 knows. Oh my goodness. I didn't think he was even gonna come close to putting the base of his snowboard down, but surprised me. The 70th annual Pro Bowl is Sunday at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific from Orlando. It's the AFC versus the NFC on ESPN and ABC. And you can always watch it on the ESPN app from anywhere. Craig, you know who won't be playing in the Pro Bowl? Who's that? George Kittle or any of the 49ers. They got a bigger game to worry about. <laughs> Go Niners. Hey, for more from the course, let's head down to the third member of our team, DC. What's going on, man? Hey guys, beautiful story down here about Brock Crouch and his family. Of course, his family is very supportive. His mom and dad decided to fly in and surprise him out here this morning. And they showed up about two hours before the competition, caught him in the athlete lounge while he was on the exercise bike. So I just love the support out there. But you know what, unfortunately, their Bulldog Earl wasn't able to make the trip. He's at back home rooting for Brock. But yeah, beautiful stuff down here. And Rene Renekongas, how about this guy speaking of beautiful stuff? Yeah, thank you, DC. I love that Brock's family surprised him out here. And he just put down a great run to jump up in the fourth, but Rene Renacongas. Speaking of great runs, whoa. The first half of that run, all switch. Switch double backside rodeo, switch tail. Come on. 
Can we take another look? Let's take a look at the last two jumps here. It goes back triple. That's what took him down on run one. He says, nah, -uh, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, never again. And he goes front side 900 here on that shark fin feature. And the fin, he's come to play. Wow, what a run there from Rene Renacongas. But now our defending gold medalist, Mark McMorris, that 16 gave him trouble. Will he go back to the well and try to clean that up and climb up this leaderboard, Craig? It's going to be really, really interesting to see here. I like that little cab three. We saw Rene do that as well before the rainbow. The more you got to add, the more you're doing, the harder it makes you run, and the higher you're going to get a rank. So he goes switch back 12, puts a switch backside rotation at the top instead of that third jump, front side double. Looks like he's going to go back triple right here. He's got to get on the juice, and that he does. Does he have enough gas for this, though? No! Now, this is the hardest part of the slope style course. When you land that third jump, you have to edge out and then hold your speed as you attack the shark fin. And Mark just didn't have enough speed for that trick. I was impressed, Craig, that he was able, able to get on his horse and look, whip it back around. There. Look at how slow he's going on that last one. You see him duck his head there, trying to fight it around, but obviously not enough English on it. Unfortunate. We are two runs in, and it's Red Gerard leading the way. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations.
Red Gerard. One of the steeziest rail riders we've ever seen. I mean, the kid's on fire. Hey. Hey, Red. Welcome Lee. to Great Clips. Thank you. you. Ready to hit the slope? I am. Red Gerard, 18 years old. He is so technical, so steezy up top. Cool. Yeah, that one's sick. I don't even need to snowboard anymore. Ever since I've really been walking, I've been either on a bicycle or on a snowboard. When I was a kid, I just grew up snowboarding with my brothers and stuff, and that's how I got hooked on it. I just try to focus on the winter and do as best as I can and all that. Then when the summer comes around, I get to enjoy and be, you know, a younger kid and all that again. I mean, with all the new tricks and stuff coming out, my passion for snowboarding hasn't ever been higher. There's always fears and stuff like that going through your head, but when I'm feeling good on my snowboard and I'm feeling confident, that's definitely when I'm snowboarding best. When you look great, you feel great, you perform great. Love that Red Gerard in our Great Clips athlete profile. Welcome back to the men's snowboard slope style final on the Jeep slope style course here at X Games Aspen. And Craig, we're really in for a treat. Just rolling into the studio. I don't even know if this was planned. Snowboarding royalty, Sage Kotzefer coming through. What's happened, man? I got lost on the way here. I'm not I, gonna lie, but I stumbled sounds, in. That I stumbled in. Very accurate, Sage. It's actually great that you're here. Red Gerard is currently leading this contest. Yes, he is. An American has not podiumed on the men's snowboard slope style at X Games since Sage Kotzenberg in 2012. <laughs> We're slacking, dude. What's we going on? Red, take us away, baby. <laughs> uh, so you've got to watch a little bit of this so far. We've got a bit of a new format. What oh, do you yeah. think so far? It's good. It is, uh, I really like the format. It's a... Uh, it, I don't know. I want to see people go like four different runs if you right. can. You know, like you already saw Mark mix it up on the first jump. He kind of fell in the last uh, shark fin feature, but. Well, who's being rewarded in this format? Uh, the, essentially what you said, we haven't seen four runs yet, but the guys who are doing very different runs, Red Gerard, Sven yep. Torgren, Mons Roysland, they're obviously sitting atop our podium right now, Brando. So we kick off run number three in our jam, and it's Sven Thorgren who was leading this thing through the first run. He's now in that silver medal spot. Do you call him Svenergy as well, Sage? Oh, yeah. Sven. I think I think Sage coined it. I think I might have coined that. I tend to coin nicknames a and, lot. And, and for our viewers at home, why? Why Svenergy? This, I mean, you saw him come out the gate swinging on the first run. Yeah. I mean, everyone, I was at the top watching with all the riders, and people were, that was he kind of right kind of shook people up, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Oh, oh, going down right there. But that's the way to do it. I mean, you're, you're dropping in first. You, you come out swinging. Yeah. Set the tone, if you will. Yeah. You had to shake people up, scare the riders. Yeah. Uh, it's is all there any, so you were up, the, up at the top for the first run. Well, what was the mind game situation? Were people in each other's kitchen? What are we talking? People were definitely uh, people were definitely watching. Yeah. Uh, kind of all in their own little zones. But, okay. Um, I think the person that was the most hyped was Rene Renekongas. No way, yeah. really? Yeah. Wow, what Sven a shocker lands and He's all juiced yeah. on it. Story checks out. Story checks yeah. out. Let's let this guy go. Dorsey Sharp. Darcy, excuse me. Sitting in seventh place, he looked really good in qualifying. Now he's trying to move up in the standings. Darcy has one of the most technical rail abilities out of anyone in snowboarding. So watching him always put it down the slope style runs amazes me. The Comox kid, where he really stood out for me was that rail feature in run one, that switch over two. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Man, the light, I think, is affecting people a lot. And we haven't got to talk about that yeah. yet, Sage. If you could explain, like, clouds, are look the exact, they look the exact same as the landings of the jump. Yeah, I mean, you see that blue dot in the landings. Obviously, that's to, to see everything. But when you're doing double course and triple course, you're literally looking for those lines as spotting. And it's, it's tough right now. I was just at the top, and it's literally clouds in the snow are looking a lot the same right yeah. now. So that's Darcy's third run, and it should be noted, again, this is no longer a single best run counts. You've got to put it all on the line each and every run, shake it up for that overall impression. But now that we're a couple runs in, it looks like riders will get a fourth run. That's huge. We've never been able to generally do that in previous contests. We'll see who takes advantage of that. But here is our current leader, Red Gerard. So red. Ooh. See if he does that switch back two. One of the best switch back twos in the game. Yes, he I does. Oh, oh, and he pulls it back. He pulls it back. We okay. love that. We love that. You very, he, very technical rail line. You think he's going one way, then he pulls it back. No. That is a very, very hard trick. 
gets a little bit lost on that switch backside 10, but Red, so I don't think he meant to go 10 on that, and he's someone that will just keep going, yeah. which, honestly, I think this format benefits someone like Red, Mark, Rene. They're riding. They can adapt to every run. And speaking much. of adapting there, I want to go back to his first two runs. Goes cab 9 on the shark fin. The next run, he goes front 10. Here he goes front 9. So we've seen three different tricks from Red Gerard on that shark fin feature, and I don't know if anybody else in the field will actually do three different tricks on that thing, so that will definitely be something of note. Oh, yeah. The kid knows how to play the game. Yeah. Switch back 10 there. Judd Hankis sitting in sixth place. Half cap back three. Last run he was going switch 50 cap two onto it, so switching up that first rail. Switch tail to Sev. Cap 10, switch backside Whoa, switch 14. Back 14. Wow. I did not see that coming. No. I don't, I don't know, know if he saw that. that. <laughs> it didn't come either. We're all the same, saying the play in the same oh, game. Oh, yeah. Man, I really think, wow, front 10 off the Sark. That was insane. Honestly, one of the best front 10s. Well, Matt, this is always a super exciting event. I think we can expect to see some insane tricks. Well said. We always look for innovation in this event, and that's exactly what we're getting. Deep. You don't see that Deep. every day. So Brock Crouch sitting in fourth, just outside of that podium spot, dropping in for his third run. Brock is probably looking forward to his trip to Japan tomorrow, oh. mid-run, honestly. <laughs> Him and Red are going to go to powder town tomorrow in Japan, so he's probably looking to kind of just lay it down here and go ride some pow. would be no better feeling getting on the airplane to Japan with an X Games gold medal in slope style, though. You Woo! wear that thing on the plane. Oh, yeah. Metal around the neck, immediate upgrade. Chains have you out here. Going for a more calm jump line, but honestly, probably a good idea, though. Visibility is getting so bad that I think putting stuff down right now and landing is more important than putting down your gnarliest run. Just stay on your feet. That's yeah. a great point, Sage. And that's what Brock Crouch just did there. Switched up the rails, too. We saw him in runs one and two go 50-50 uh, front one, cab three out there. He hits an entire different rail feature. I like the alley-oop on the shark fin, too. True, true. Mons Roisland sitting third in our rankings right now as we close in on the 10-minute mark here on the Jeep Slope style course. Mons is an absolute powerhouse, too. Rails and jumps. And Brock Crouch just moved up into second place. And that's what we love about this live ranking system is it is constantly changing. As Mons dropped in, he thought he was third. Now he's in fourth. One of the best switch backside spinners in the game. Actually, facts. Not so bad on his backside wow. either, though. Oh. Tickling oh. the melon on that one. But. He went for the grab, said no. Went back to the well, said no. And I'm interested on where he'll go after that one with kind of messing up on the grab, but he's laid down a couple pretty nasty runs. That's the thing. Just behind Sven Thorgren right now, I, I don't see him moving ahead of Sven, but I could be wrong because of this. Yep. Would you put him ahead of Sven? I don't think so right now. Sven's kind of Sven's kind of laid it down. One of my favorite riders to watch in general, Rena Renekongas, one of the happiest kids on planet Earth. No one's more stoked to be at X Games than Rene. No one's more stoked. No one's busier, Sage. He's got four events. This one, Big Air, Rail Jam, and Knuckle Hunt. He's a bit of an ATV. Kid can ride everything. <laughs> oh, that was nice. Now, we've seen him do a very, very similar jump line. Here, there switches it up, though. 
Oh. That trick to put in a slope style run is actually so, so insane. But and at with the that start, grab, yeah. at the very start of all four jumps, with that grab, it always comes around a little bit different. So it just hit different. It hits different. Rana hits different, honestly. <laughs> And here's the beautiful thing about Rene. Even though you're supposed to do tricks on the way down, if that didn't matter, he still would do that. Yeah, He would still up. try his hardest tricks. Mm -hmm. Falls up top, still uh, still going for the front ten. Yeah. Below. Very excited to watch him in Knuckle Huck. So we are turning our attention now to Mark McMorris, obviously he's not here. He's not here. facing history, trying to tie Sean White's all-time winter medal discipline record of 18. He's one off. And we're waiting to see Mark now. He's set, ready to drop in. Again, this is no longer a single run format. Mark's gone 0 for 2 through those first two runs. It's very important for him to put down a clean run here today. As you look at the history, as we said, Sean White with 18, Jamie winning today, getting that 17th, and Joe Parsons also with 17. So Mark could tie Sean here today and possibly pass him with Big Air tonight. That's correct. That's a big Saturday. That's a huge Saturday. Yeah. Just adjusting the helmet there. Don and Cindy McMorris know very well, making the trip down from Regina, Saskatchewan, actually. Actually, Don, Don came was from in California. Encinitas. <laughs> Encinitas, Don. Yeah. We had a wonderful sushi line. dinner <laughs> yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Did you? Yeah, you guys did, hey? No, always good to have the McMorrises here. Not only do they get to see their son Mark potentially break history, but they get to see their son Craig work in the booth and also compete in the rail jam tomorrow. Excited for that. That's going to be a blast. A very eclectic group of riders in that it field. Is. Well said. <laughs> it is. It is insane. All right, Mark coming in. I love that rail choice right there. The 50 50 up, back to 70 with the cab three butter right there. What's so hard about that is that pole jam is straight on. So to initiate the 270, you have to do all shoulders and hips. You can't yep. use your edge on it at you all. You got to go fully flat based off that, which is very tough on switchbacks. Yeah. On the backside. Switch back 12, hood coming up. Front 10 double, adjust the hood. Backside triple 14, stomped. Oh there my God! There he goes! Front double going to nine, brings it back. I need to see that again. Okay, listen here, ladies and gentlemen. Last year I talked about him being a scramble quarterback, no trick proves that more. I don't think he was Dude, going to switch no, to regular. What? It looked like he was going to switch and then just wow, evades I like the hip. That. that is a very Sage Cotton There goes trip. that man. Hey, Sage, thank you so much for being in the booth with us. What a run. Thank you, guys. From Mark McMorris. We're having such a good time out here on the Jeep Slope Style course. More from X Games Aspen when we return.
Rene Renacongas, he's such an amazing snowboarder competing out here on the Jeep Slope style course. And he's just so stoked and full of pure joy. Let's see what Rene's been up to in this athlete profile. I'm Rene Renacongas, I'm 20 years old and I'm a snowboarder. Mixing up filming streets and uh, doing contests might be a little little hard and uh, hectic sometimes, but I think there's too many cool things going on that I don't want to miss. Now we've been filming for the real snow for a while and uh, we're going to take a little pause from filming and go to US for the main event in, in Aspen. One can bump yeah. himself up into the podium conversation. It feels pretty unreal to be able to ride with all the rock stars that I've always been watching from TV and be a part of that side of snowboarding. So it, it's amazing. I'll come back here for one week and get the last clip for the real snow. Then we are pretty much done. I'm just too stoked to have the chance to do all this and uh, just ride everything. Oh, Rene, so humble, but yep. we're so excited to have him in the mix, and he will, of course, be a mainstay for years to come here on the Jeep Slope Style course. We're three runs in to our men's snowboard slope style final, and Red Gerard still leading the way, <laughs> but we have to give credit to your brother, Mark McMorris, with an incredible run. He was in eighth place. That jumped him all the way up in the fourth. Big scramble play, especially on that shark fin feature. I don't think he was going for that, but the air awareness to hold the rotation and just get the base down, very, very impressive. So here's Sven Thorgren, who was leading this thing early, thought he had a podium spot. Now he's sitting in fifth. Now with Sven Thorgren dropping in, that clock doesn't really matter now. The rest of the field will get one more run in, and Sven Thorgren trying to take a shot. Frontside triple court, 1440, takes him out, though, Brando. That yeah, tough one. Sven's first run was so good. He led from uh, top to bottom of that entire first run order. And not finishing the way he would hope, but we move our attention now to Darcy Sharp, sitting right, in eighth ready. place. All good? Yep. Rails have never been in question. Nope. Jumps either. When Darcy's on, he's on. In elimination, he was riding so strong. Here in finals, he just needs to find his groove. And I, I mean, there's, there's no reason he can't jump up, you know, into that maybe fourth, third conversation. How can Darcy get his groove back? Is what we're <laughs> looking for here on his fourth and final run. Well, he needs to go absolutely hammer here. And that, that was hammer. That is such a massive gap on that thing. Wow. The way he pulled back that too as well. Front blunt to fake, he cap 10. Puts that down. Switch back 12. Yep. Front side triple. Yep. Don and Shan have to be losing their minds right now. Darcy's parents, and what a pull from Darcy Sharp. <laughs> parents losing their mind. I'm sure his sister, Cassie Sharp, who was competing later today, is losing her mind. And we are losing ours here, Brando. That was a clutchful pull from Darcy Sharp. Darcy shave, saving his best run for last. Good to see him put one down. We'll see yeah, how boy. that moves up his position in the standings. Let's head back down to DC for more from the course. Well, guys, uh, hanging out down here, talking to your parents, Craig, and your dad. Wow, Darcy's losing his mind right now as he just jumped into the top spot. But Craig, your dad, he wants us to have a talk with your brother. Says he never listens to him. Always putting him through the stress, waiting to put it down after that last <laughs> run. And also talking to Mons about the conditions. Part of the French, he said the light has gone to keep. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, DC. Yes, Darcy should be hyped. He went from the bottom to the top, all the way into first place, Craig. I did not see that coming, but that was an amazing run from Darcy Sharp. And how about Red Gerard, who he took the lead away from? 
taking care of business on his last run. Now this is going to be very, very interesting. Where did the judges put Red Gerard? Four very different runs. He has done this cab nine double on the shark fin, but four different runs. Does that beat Darcy's? I don't know. Oh, uh, look at the pure adulation from Darcy Sharp. Because it's truly a full body of work when you think about overall impression across four runs. Here's Judd Hankins. And it doesn't look like Red is moving past Darcy. And that's the crazy thing about this live ranking. It can constantly change. As the judges have more time, they can shuffle the order. Right now, Darcy Sharp, Red Gerard, Brock Crouch sitting in podium positions. Oh, Judd, not enough speed on that switchback 12, but the tenacity to hang on to it. And boost a back triple. How did he get speed there? And that front side 10. Oh, oh. wow. Stompsville. You could hear that stomp and you knew it was clean even if you had your eyes down on your phone but could listen to your TV. <laughs> you knew that was a landing. So here's Brock Crouch sitting in that bronze medal spot but a gold medal in our hearts for this kit, no doubt. Absolutely. Couldn't set it better myself. Boardside pretzel. Cap two keeps it to switch here. Switch lip, same way out. So coming in this first of the four pack. Switch back seven here from Brock Crouch. Cap 12. And goes backside 14, 40 all the way down. And a front side 720. So Brock's approach is let's keep it mellow, let's stay on our feet. Now, I know a backside trip on a cap 12 aren't mellow, but the switch back seven at the top, definitely you wouldn't see that in the final. How does this compare to Red's previous run? Is this enough? to jump up into second place. I don't think it is just because of that switch back seven and the switch lip same way on that third and final rail feature, but I could be wrong. So here's Mons Roisland sitting just outside of the podium in fourth place. Front one in, switch back three, cab 10 muscles it around. And as Sage alluded to in that last run, one of the best switch backside rotations and one of the best backside rotations. Alley 10? Wow, frontside 10 off the heels from Mons Roisland. Now we're talking. Mons Roisland has entered the chat. He entered the group chat. He's changed his status from busy to active. Yes. Hey, a good one here. Yes. Would you expect anything less from Rene Renacongas on top of the Jeep on the Jeep yeah. Slope style course? Very meta. Rene is in eighth place. But so was Darcy Sharp. Oh and he is our current leader. <laughs> wow. 50 backside 270 here. So as of right now, that run from Brock Crouch. And Mons Roisland oh, jumping Royce. up into the silver medal spot, bumping out Brock Crouch. Switch double backside rodeo, fell on that last time, doesn't make the mistake this time, so tough to do. Backside nine. Cab 12. Front side 10 and just puts it down on his seat. So Rene Renacongas, I don't believe, will move up out of that eighth position. So with that, let's turn our attention now to our defending gold medalist. He will be the last one to drop in, Mark Mick Morris. We call him the closer. 
He's in familiar territory to last year. If you remember, he needed a walk-off to win it outright. Now he needs something huge. He's sitting in seventh place, Craig. He's got the tricks, we know that. It's execution. There's a nice little graphic there. Jamie Anderson earning the gold medal in women's slip style earlier today. Six slip style gold medals. Does Mark McMorris join her with this run? Wow. An uncharacteristic fall right out of the gate. So Mark McMorris going down on that first rail. That's a tough one for the kid. But I mean, who would have expected this podium? Can I be perfectly honest with you? And that's what I love about slope style and the level that these guys are at. It's anybody's game, any day. Obviously this podium not official. You know, we, we've talked about it all day long and, and what a moment for Darcy Sharp as we await the official results, but so much at stake, historically speaking, for your brother. That's a tough one, but no one prouder for Darcy and happier for him than Mark McMorris, I can guarantee you that. And I've just gotten word that the podium is official. Darcy Sharp earns his very first X Games gold medal. your first X Games gold medal. My dude, what's going through your head right now? I am ridiculously happy. Well, there you have it. Congratulations, <laughs> Darcy Sharp. Short on words, big on tricks. Your X Games gold medalist. Well said, DC. Congratulations to Darcy Sharp, as well as Mons Royson with the silver, and Red Gerard with the bronze medal. What a performance today, Craig. Darcy Sharp came correct in his final run. We talked about his rails all weekend long, and he just delivered, he executed. What a performance. And the Sharp household, they could be having two gold medals. Cassie Sharp is competing in the pipe later tonight. A magical moment for Darcy Sharp, his first career X Games gold. Well, the X Games and Jeep are all about taking things to the next level. This year, we've created a new award that celebrates the most amazing moments of the X Games. Let's take a look. Take control while taking on the elements. See which athlete takes home the Golden Grill. So what an incredible per performance. Jamie Anderson was our <laughs> best in snow, winning that gold medal earlier today and matching her on this Jeep Slope style course. Just fantastic. Wendy Snowbike Cross still to come. But first, we'll check in with our host, Jack Matrani, after the break and see what went down in the Special Olympics Unified Snowboarding and Skiing after this message and a word from our ABC stations. 